Hi, welcome to Eddie's Research. Research in the news, is it true or false? This is a different type of research that I've done before for other kinds of things. I like to say I look at all things in the world of research, some in the news, some not, but all look into things in more depth than they actually appear to be. So once again, a random bit to look at. I'm looking at a building. Fantastic, I hear you all yell. A building? Wow. Does it have a roof? Well, yes it does, but let's not get ahead of ourselves here. I'm looking at a building, when it was built, who by, and for who. And then I'm looking at similar ones to see a trend. Yep, back to my favourite area that I've done before, spotting trends in stuff, which I did before in the pay gap and the um, motivate and things like that. So let's look at where this is located. Now, it's in a place called Bingham, which is in Nottingham in the UK. Uh, I always I like to sort of avoid Wikipedia as much as I can but I use it as a starting block um, because I don't, I don't I don't really rate it because any Tom, Dick or Harry can go in there and edit it and people swear by the site is 100% true and they think that all their exams can be passed because they've just read Wikipedia that I can edit and you know delete stuff. Anyway I digress Let's look at it. So here we are, Wikipedia, Bingham, Nottinghamshire. Uh, it tells you a bit about where it is, the history if you want to read it. It's on down there. Uh, and on the right is the building. And there it is, for you to see in all its glory. Um, so this this is the building here. This is the, the building that we're looking at. Now, it doesn't look bad, does it? But what actually is it? Well, according to Wiki, it's a butter cross. And if, in case you have no idea what that is, unfortunately, we'll link Wikipedia again just so we can figure out what it actually is. Okay, so here it is, butter cross. And a butter cross, also known as a butter cross, is a type of market cross associated with English market towns and dating from medieval times. Its name originates from the fact that they were located at the marketplace where people from neighbouring villages would gather to buy locally produced butter, milk and eggs. The first produce was laid out and displayed on the circular steps based on the cross. Their design varies from places to places, place to place, but they are often covered by some type of roof to offer shelter, although the roofs are mostly added at a much later date than the original cross that they, they covered. So it dates from medieval times. But hang on a second, let me just check that building again. So here we are, not in Shire, not in Shire history. Ooh, I hate words with shears on the end, shires, I can never say them correctly. And it was actually built in 1861, so that's not really medieval times, is it? Um, so, what about that cross that it is? The roof. What's that supposed to be covering? And what does this look like? And why is it a cross? As usual, I'm going to take a slight tangent, as I always tend to like to do, and delve into the origins. So this is like a history, architecture, folklore type of research. Something new to me, but why not do something at my comfort zone? I kind of like doing random things now and then. So the butter cross is a type of market cross. Cross being the key work here. So the market is just that. It's where the local market was, and butter is where butter or dairy were sold. The cross was the structure to mark the location, but as you can probably tell, the actual cross no longer exists. The foundations might underneath it, but the structure and roof, etc., is built on the top so that people can use it as a meeting place. Okay, so we now know what this type of structure is or was. Now I'm curious about this actual building in Bingham. There's actual words going around the building, just above the arches. So, you can't really see it, but there are the words, there. And luckily, um, somebody was doing a video on this, and they were reading the words, or did the video backwards, as it backwards, um, you know, did it all in the sort of 
I could view in and read what it said. So it basically says, This market cross has been built in affectionate remembrance of John Hassel of Shelford by his friends and neighbours and deny unreadable beer, we couldn't read what it was, M-D-I-L-L-T or something, uh, to be beloved is better than all bargains. So there was a little bit that I couldn't read, maybe because it was a little bit kind of um, worn, something like that. Now, this is a market cross, or this says it's, sorry, let me go back here. This says it's a market cross. Um, but the websites, uh, Wikipedia and Knott's History, say it's a butter cross. So some say it's a market cross, some say a butter cross. There was another website I looked at, I think it was the... Um, oh, the, no, actually, the, the wording around the... Sorry about that. The wording around the um, the thing says this market cross, but it's actually butter cross. But they're different types of crosses. So maybe because it's smaller than a marketplace, some people are saying butter. Because it's not big, is it? I mean, if you look there, you know, look back at this other picture that we had here. There, it's not big. You know, it's it's not like hundreds of people can just mill around there. So maybe that's why they said it was a butter cross, just to come, uh, come along and sell some, sell some butter. Now let's look at the architect that actually built this. Remember, this is the actual structure, not the cross that may still be underneath it. Okay, so here we are in the Bingham Heritage uh, website, and um, it says the Butter Cross, again back to the Butter Cross, was erected at a cost of £700, uh, which I'm assuming by then was quite expensive, in 1861 by public subscription in memory of John Hassel, the Earl of Chesterfield's popular land agent, who was designed by Nottingham architect Thomas Chambers Hine, and replaced a similar earlier one that had become derelict. So it's not the original. Note that the end of the gas pipe and brackets must have been fitted to supply the lamp to the roof after the gas works were opened north of the railway line in 1853. So it was Thomas Chambers Hines and he built it for John Hassel, the Earl of Chesterfield's popular land agent. We'll come to him in a, minute, a few minutes, but let's first look at Thomas. Well, good old Wikipedia has him as usual. Here he is, and he's built a, quite a fair few buildings here. If you look here, look, he's, he's oh, look, some pictures there. He built that one there, and this one. Uh, that one. No, that's not really a map, is it? He built this church here. This church. Um, a few things there. What's they built there? Nothing there built this as so he's built quite a few churches and some schools that's not a church really in my mind there's some nice churches here small churches uh, what else we got he's built that the hospital my god that's a a tunnel apparently a warehouse might be updated since so you know, like I say churches railway stations um, more railway stations, 1860, 1870, 1880, so his latest one was that one, which I'm assuming is that one, I'm not sure. No, that's the school, I don't know where that is. There, he built that one in 1880. So here we are on the archives hub here, of the papers of Thomas Chambers High. Now obviously I can't view them all because as usual you've got to pay for stuff. Uh, but it gives you a bit of a, uh, a look-see and uh, where is he? Thomas Chambers Hine was born in London in 1813, the eldest son of a hosiery manufacturer, Jonathan Hine. In 1834, Hine completed his architecture training in London and moved to Nottingham. In 1848, he won a national competition to design a pair of agricultural workers' cottages and published a monograph that is, containing the specifications and designs for them. Important commissions followed, including the Nottingham Corn Exchange in Thurland Street, a factory for Hine and Mandela Limited in Station Street, um, and the rebuilding of Oxton Hall in Derbyshire and Flinton Hall in Nottinghamshire. Hine was as versatile as he was prolific and applied a variety of styles to as many houses, hospitals, schools, churches, and railway stations that he designed in the East Midlands. There's a few mistakes here in this website, but I'm not going to complain. Hine's latest projects included the rebuilding and renovation of the castle, Shire Hall, and Corsi Nottingham. 
He was in partnership with William Bass in the 1830s and 40s, Robert Evans until 1867, and finally his son George Thomas Hine. T.C. Hine was also an enthusiastic building conservationist, conservationist? Can't say that. lecturer on archaeology and architecture, and was elected a Fellow of the Society of Antiquaries in 1876 and died in 1899. So, you know, he, he, he's done a lot in his life. Probably a lot more than <laughs> most people, and um, probably a lot more than a lot of architectures these days, because the architecture that he's built is still standing, whereas a lot of stuff that we build, look, and also it looks like, I, I don't know, I just like old buildings. New buildings look, I don't know, sterile. <clears throat> so who was the person that he actually built this for? The, you know, John Hassel, the Earl of Chesterfield's popular land agent. But take note, it's not the Earl of Chesterfield, but his land agent. That's the, that's the thing. Well, this can be confirmed from this uh, very intense site called thepeerage.com. Um, I'll just show you the home site here. And you think, well, let's have a look at surnames. There's, there's loads. I mean, if you click on K, <laughs> there's, there's a K. Let's look at S. And these are peerages all over the place in Britain and the royal families of Europe so it's massive so uh, we're looking at Chesterfield Here it is and his name is not there Hilda is whoever Hilda is an N um, but this guy isn't you can click on these yards and tell if you want. Let's have a look at this guy. See, so if you if you're interested in peerages, peerages, uh, royalty or whatever, and you're curious if you you, you might be an earl, you know your, your surname might be an earl, you might be a, a Chesterford, for example, and you might say, well, let's have a look at First Baron Essex Henry, Henry Essex. Here he is. Well, not a picture, but. Six Earth or Suffolk, blah 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 blah. Child of this person. Uh, got some citations and some other blurb as well. In fact, this probably is a bit more in depth. Anyway, so I'm not going to go into too much depth. So, who was he? Well, it turns out it was kind of a landlord. A very kind one, in, in fact. And even allowed some farmers to put their cows in his land when they bought the hay in. Um, so, you scroll down to John Hassel, and here he is. Uh, Shelford Manor was a squire, farmer, and land agent to the Earl of Chesterfield, the owner of estates in Shelford, Bingham, Galdin, and many other parishes. He, in 1844, was captain of the home Pierpont Troop of South Nottinghamshire, Eurymony. Shelford was before the reformation the seat of an Austin Priory and the Civil War, the Manor House, which was held for the king was stormed and burnt by Colonel Hutchinson and was partly rebuilt. Traces of the fire still remain. Mr. Hassel was kind-hearted and considered agent for a good landlord. Quiet and helpful. Some of his labourers had a field and a cow and he would say, turn your cow into my field until you have, your, have mown your hay. He was a remarkable early riser. In spring or summer you must see him before 7.30am. Uh, sorry, 5.30am. I don't even know that time even existed. Or he would be off. He was much respected, and in 1859, an elegant octagonal butter cross was erected in Bingham Marketplace by subscription at a cost of £700. As a memorial to his worth and character, the cross stands on or near the site of an ancient market cross, a market having been granted there in 1818 to be held on Thursdays, and statutes and other fairs were for centuries held there, but of late years they have languished. It may be that they would desire to revive the usages of the past, as well as to perpetuate a good man's memory. Curiously, there was put on the new cross in old English characters, and gilt lettering the motto, Ah, oh, to be beloved is better than all bargains. The dear old man, that must have been one of his sayings, often repeated, that says often, quaint but expressive, a grand truth, lifting the soul into pure air with a wider view for love of is God and a loving home is a little heaven. My God, where have they got that from? Um, 
The old cross was low and enclosed, but this is open for everybody, and his friends and neighbours were reminded that goodwill and the love it begets were more profitable than gains from merchandise, and this was responded to, for old people say that the, for the long period after his death on a certain day of the spring, garlands of primroses decorated the eight pillars brought by persons who knew him, and they were redolent of his memory. Uh, and in Shelford Church Yard, a recumbent ledger, a memorial tombstone with an incised floriated cross covers the grave of John Haslam and his wife, who predeceased him 15 years, but the age is not given. So, so that's, that's him there. So in conclusion to this small bit of research, that, you know, it's interesting, we've concluded that the butter cross that was built is on the same site as the market cross. It was built by an experienced architect called Thomas Chambers Hine for a well-respected land agent called John Hassel. So there's nothing sinister about all this building. And they're found all over the UK. Every, every town, every county probably has one of these things due to the original market and butter crosses that are either non-existent or buried deep. Most are not elaborate as this. Some are just a simple shelter, but some are more intricate depending on the architecture. And some might just be, you might even think, you, you look in town centre and you'll see something, um, and you think, that's a strange looking bush shelter, <laughs> or, you know, um, stuck in the middle of a, of a of a park, and you think, well, there's nothing in here. You can't use a bandstand, it's too small. What is it? It might be a book cross. Have a look, you never know find out a bit of history about your own town or somebody else's town um okay well hopefully you've enjoyed watching this um this video on the uh, on the butter cross uh i could have gone into depth and looked at every book cross, but this video would have been about like 10 years long so i just did the one that i was looking at and like i said there's nothing sinister about it the the cross the cross might still be there underneath but you know we wouldn't know that Anyway, thank you for watching. Uh, add a comment if you wish to. Um, subscribe to my channel. Uh, also, you can go directly to my website, um, which is linked. And there will be the original, um, well, the same video, and also the um, actual art, uh, research that I've uploaded in Word, um, zipped Word, and PDF. Okay, thank you for watching, and goodbye.